Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being with us again today. Well, today we're going to have a quick look at an unusual little pistol here, and that is the Beretta Cheetah. Um, this is actually the new version. Beretta decided to take this pistol, which has been around for a long time, and give it a makeover, and this is the uh, Beretta 80X Cheetah, chambered in 380 ACP. Um, with all the other guns available, you know, in various micro and compact sizes and other calibers, we'll see if this makes any sense. We'll see if the features are something that will interest you for a carry gun, and we're going to get into all of that in just a minute. All right, once again, thanks for joining us today. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've watched our videos before and you just haven't had the chance to do so before now and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can find that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen there, or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe that way. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so it lets you know when we do something new. It's an easy thing that helps out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So, the Beretta Cheetah. This was a gun that was uh, originally designed as a uh, sidearm. Um, so, you know, it's got kind of a, uh, you know, a, a high usage, kind of a duty weapon um, thought behind it and its design and uh, what it's designed to be able to do and take. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting little firearm. Uh, once again, it's chambered in 380, which, you know, some people have reservations about uh, calibers below a certain level. And, uh, and that's all fine. You have to make a decision that is a good one for you. But um, I'm pretty comfortable with the idea of carrying 380. I've done it before. I usually don't just because I have a lot of other options that I like in uh, 9mm, 45, um, etc. But it has been proven to be an effective um, caliber. But we always like to start off, of course, with a little size comparison here because this is not a small gun. You can, you can already probably see a little bit just by it being in my hand. But I can take something that is pretty common like a Glock 19, and put it next to it. And obviously the Glock 19 is bigger. The purpose for the comparison is not to try and tell you that it's the size of a Glock 19. It's look how, you know, general size. If you know how big a Glock 19 is, you know, it's got a little bit bigger grip, obviously. And it's going to be, you know, if you look at it, the thickness is really close to the same. You know, the length is a little different. The, the main difference that you'll see, of course, when you're looking at these two, is going to be the thickness of the grip and it being a little bit longer in the grip. And um, these comparisons are made just so you can think about, well, you know, when I carry this, if I'm carrying this inside the waistband in a holster, how much gun am I going to have in the body that I'm trying to hide? You know, how badly will this gun print? if I wear it either inside or outside the waistband. And if you have carried a gun like this before, then you probably have a pretty good idea of what you're looking at, you know, when you're trying to hide that bulk. This will be a little bit smaller, but still not a small gun once again. And that's one of the first things you want to look at when you're considering uh, carrying the firearm is how you can effectively um, holster the gun and keep it hidden. All right, we're gonna jump right into the features here. But before we do, we're gonna take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry. For providing us this beautiful example of the ADX Cheetah by Beretta for our tabletop review today, Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So, of course, we'll start off, as usual, making the firearm safe, get our magazine out, and we'll lock back the slide. You can see the chamber is empty, and we are as safe as we can be. So, we're going to have a little go over the features here. Start with the magazine. You can see that is a 13 round magazine and they do give you two of them, which I think is great. Um, the more mags they give me, the better. And two is kind of my minimum expectation. So that's great. Um, if you're familiar at all with the original Cheetah, you may not be. Uh, there's some slight physical changes between the old one and this one. Um, one of those changes has to do with the sights. Um, the original sights were just part of the slide. They were built in, and these actually, you know, got removable um, sights, so you can upgrade those when those are available. Um, the grip, you may have seen on uh, Beretta's before. They've got those kind of shiny um, black plastic, and they got the little cross hatch pedal diamond pattern, um, and it had a little bit bigger symbol uh, here. I've got a couple of Brettas with that same type of grip, and I, I remember those well. And then, of course, the uh, the trigger guard um, on those was very rounded, 
very much like a like a sig um, you know kind of a long round trigger guard and now they have this kind of um, squared off trigger guard and of course the addition of an accessory rail here um, that's something you certainly didn't see before so of course they've made all these strides here to modernize the gun and of course you know the back sight here has an optics plate and uh you know, Breda has said that there are several plates available to match many of the uh, popular footprints for that. So having said that, with some of those differences, I'm going to talk about some of the other features that I didn't cover there. Uh, just going back to the sight, it is a three-dot uh, sight setup and uh, just very basic. Um, you do have some pretty good serrations here, front and back on the slide. I mentioned your accessory rail. Of course, this is your slide lock and release, nice and simple. And of course, um, we were talking about... Um, features and upgrades. The original um, Cheetah had a safety on the gun and this one does as well. Now I have an issue with the way this operates and this is just me but so you would think that having a safety on the gun that you could have the gun cocked and have it on safe. But that's not the way this works. So if I cock the gun okay you push it up, it feels like it's cocked initially because you got this kind of half position here, but that's actually not doing anything. If you pull the trigger from there, it'll just fire. Okay, so if we try that again and cock it and we keep pushing, oh, oh there we go, it's safe. No, wait a minute, it decocked the gun. And yeah, there's, there, we're not missing anything here. Um, it's not like any steps are being missed. It, the gun does not allow it to be carried cocked and locked. So what purpose does it serve? Well, if you have the safety on, the gun will not operate. So it is an actual safety, but uh, it is not a safety you can use um, when the gun is ready to fire. So it's just a matter whether that's something that uh, you like or not. For me personally, um, like I say, when you have a double action, single action pistol like this, I like the idea of a double action trigger pull because to me that longer trigger pull is a bit of safety all by itself because it takes so much effort for that initial trigger pull. And I'm not a big fan of safeties on my carry guns anyway. So this is really be one of those deals that when you get ready to pull the gun, if you don't carry it on safe, you could either pull it and go into single action, of course, and prepare to take your shot, or you could just use the double action trigger pull. So you've got options as to how to do that. Um, but to me, that type of safety, um, I don't know, that, that, that's a pointless safety as far as I'm concerned, but that's just me. Um, others may love it. I'll, uh, I'll go over this trigger more in the range section, but I like the trigger quite a bit. You get your magazine release. It's in this little pocket right here in the grip, and it's, uh, it's fairly well protected from being accidentally hit with anything. With a good two-handed grip, I never feel like I'm on top of it at all, so that's great. Um, you've got some pattern cut right into the uh, frame here for the grip. Same thing on the back. Uh, feels pretty good. That in combination with this modernized grip, it feels really good in the hand. The ergonomics are really nice. And of course, you look at it, you can tell that quite a bit of effort has gone into the fit and finish on the firearm. Um, it looks good. And like I say, it's it's functional in a way that I enjoy. Double action, single action. I'm just not a real big fan of the safety because uh, it doesn't really operate the way I like a safety to work. All right, so let's talk about how it shoots. So I mentioned, of course, this is a 380 ACP, or as they would say in Europe, it is 9mm short. Um, I don't have an objection with 380 as defensive cartridge. I simply don't own very many of them, and so I don't really have a lot of good options for that in carry. Um, but there are many people that do, and I don't see an issue with that whatsoever. Now, this particular gun is unusual um, to me, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me take the mag out here again. And so... The trigger weights on this are kind of weird to me. Normally when I have a double action, single action pistol, I'm expecting a little bit heavier double action trigger pull. This one is, my scale, I got a little over, well, almost six and a half pounds, okay? And it's a good trigger pull. You have just a slight little take up here and then you feel the weight all the way back and then a good crisp break. So it feels good. Then your single action trigger pull, this was more of a, four pound right at four pounds it's just a slight bit of take up and then you're in the groove bam nice crisp trigger so there's nothing wrong with six and four um 
you still I still believe that that double action trigger pull still is a nice safety layer you know as far as um, keeping the gun safe the travel plus the additional weight but normally um, most of my double action single action guns we're looking at more nine or ten pounds on the double action pull maybe more in the four or five pound range on the single action so it's just different I'm not saying it's bad it's just it's just different it has an unusual uh, feel to it so let's look at the reset here so if I pull the single action trigger here and then we reset let's watch okay that's not bad that's not bad at all. And it's pretty consistent. Now, it's not the shortest reset that I've seen, but it still feels pretty good. Um, and like I say, the ergonomics of this gun are very good. It feels very good in the hand. And so um, getting used to this gun doesn't take very long. Um, now, there are people that have, I've, I've gotten some feedback from other people about this same gun. Um, range day we actually had uh, two different people with this same gun present when we were doing our initial testing and they reported um, some problems with some hollow points but they weren't specific um, now i can tell you that that wasn't the experience that we had um, the remington this is the remington ultimate defense 102 grain um, no problem with this um, critical defense this is 90 grain horny and of course, um, one of my favorite, um, the Hydroshock. These are 90 grain um, Federal Hydroshocks. And none of these had any issues. I don't know what type of uh, ammo that a uh, Sutter gentleman said that he was having problems with, but uh, from, from my uh, experience, um, the uh, Cheetah did just fine with everything that you gave it. And I didn't have anybody else mention any problems either. So it seems to be a pretty... Uh, not picky, pretty reliable little firearm. Um, like I say, I do think that the I do think the safety is an issue because uh, with a gun like this, I would want to carry this. I don't know. I think I might even want to carry this cocked and locked. The fact that it's a double action, single action, I don't have to because I'll just keep it safety off. You draw the gun and I go straight to double action. That's kind of the way I like to treat this kind of gun. But if I knew this safety would actually allow me to have the gun um, safe while it was cocked, that's probably how I'd want to carry it. So that'd be a disappointment for those of you that thinking about carrying this 1911 style because you're not going to be able to do it. Um, as far as reliability, um, it's great and great trigger, accurate little gun um, with good features. So what's it like to carry the ADX Cheetah by Beretta? Well, you know, this gun, the overall size, like I showed you in the beginning, it's not all that different as far as, you know, overall length and, and height of the grip as to something like a Glock 19. But it doesn't have the same bulk. It doesn't feel as heavy, and of course, it's carrying fewer rounds and a slightly smaller cartridge. So as far as the weight, this is a gun that can actually be managed in a little bit smaller holster. Now, in this case, my big winner was VersaCarry. Um, this is actually a holster that fits the um, original Cheetah, and um, it's a great little holster. I like these quite a bit. I don't use a lot of single clip holsters. Um, the Versa Carry has kind of won my affections just because of the construction. I really like uh, the durability, the stitching. Um, the single clip that they use in the middle is really, really strong. And then they put a whole lot of padding in here that goes against the body. And it also ventilates. You've got these little recesses. So while it's against your body, you're not just forming sweat. Um, so it's a very comfortable holster. And the, uh, the little cheetah really didn't feel that heavy. Um, I carried it um, kind of not quite a 3 o'clock position. I don't really carry, um, you know, up front. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but, you know, around the 3 o'clock position is typically where I will uh, um, carry a gun like this. And there's many, many holsters, obviously, that will do a good job. But for the purpose of my testing, um, this little Versa carry did a great job. Um, so the weight very manageable um if this gun was a little bit smaller i might even you know 
try something in the pocket. If I was wearing some big cargo pants, I might be able to do it. It's just a little bit bigger than usually where I stop on something like that, like with a DeSantis uh, gun hide that'll you know hold the gun up in your pocket. But using a single clip holster and the waistband, um, it was very comfortable and uh, it, you don't really notice the weight of the gun because it is very slim and it does hold close to the body. So very easy and very comfortable to carry. All right, well, if we're gonna give the Beretta Cheetah an overall grade, um, let's look at some of the pros and cons here. I think that uh, this is a very well-made gun. It's a nice looking gun. It's got great features. Um, it's a double action, single action, which for me is a huge win. Um, I just really like, um, I like hammer fired guns anyway. I always have and always will. And I think that double action, single action is just a safe way to carry a gun. I think they kind of ruin it with this safety because they could have just easily made this a, a full safety and decocker, but they didn't. Um, and I understand why. I mean, it still, you know, allows them to make the gun completely safe with it on. It's just not something that makes sense to me um, on a carry gun. So, 380 ACP, like I say once again, it's a, it's a capable enough cartridge. Um, for me, you know, there's some things about this gun that don't make any sense. And really, it's got to do with just comparing it to other options. Now, at the time that this gun was made originally, you got to remember, like I said, this was a like a backup gun. Um, so, you know, law enforcement, military around the world might be something they would carry, you know, secondary to their main duty weapon. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit bigger. It's no different than like I, uh, one of my favorite guns is like a SIG 239, which seems like a really oversized nine millimeters. It's only eight plus one capacity. That's true, but the gun is very easy to shoot. Um, and that's kind of the same thought process behind this. It's not the most compact gun in the world. And it doesn't have the greatest capacity, but you know, 13 plus one of 380 is not bad. And the larger frame and the ergonomics makes it a very easy to shoot gun. So would I carry it? Well, probably not. And it's not because there's anything wrong with the gun. It's just because I can carry nine millimeter with the same capacity and take up not near as much space. And I have a lot of different ways I can do that. Um, for me, like for example, this little Hellcat, you know, just out of the box, I've got better sights, I've got a more powerful cartridge, and even though this is a striker fired gun, not a hammer fired gun, um, there are main things about this gun, of course, that make it much smaller and compact and easier for me to carry. So I'm not saying that it's better. This Brett is a nice gun, and I think that if you're into this style of gun, especially if you're a Beretta fan, it's definitely something you want to add to your collection. But it doesn't make any sense for me to carry a larger gun than I have to. The further along I go in my concealed carry journey, the smaller and smaller I try to get with my firearm. Because the whole idea is something that you can conceal comfortably. And you can do it, but to me, if I can carry... 13 plus one of nine millimeter in a smaller platform, that's probably what I'll do. So for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't make sense for somebody else. It is a nice gun. Now, of course, the price. So this gun is, the MSRP is right at, right at $1,000 for this thing. Okay, that's, that's a lot of money. Of course, now this is a fancy, it has a nice fancy little collector's box and all of that. I believe they start at around $799, so you can get them a little bit cheaper than that. But still, $800 is a lot of money for a, you know, 380 defensive pistol. And for some people, that's more than double what they're willing to spend on a gun to begin with. So I definitely think this gun is for a certain kind of person. Um, either a person who wants a very specific type and size of firearm, they want a specific cartridge, or they just love Beretta and they want this for their collection. And I think there's people to meet all those categories. But for me, ultimately, it doesn't make that much sense as my concealed carry weapon just because it's a lot bigger than it has to be to do less than I want it to. But having said that, it's a great little pistol, so there's no reason to shy away from it if you are a fan. All right. That's going to do it for today. As always, we thank you for being with us. We'll be back soon with another video for you. So until that time, everybody, please stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.